Okay, the first thing you want to do is identify the components and make sure you receive the correct number of components as listed on the shipping report. need a flathead screwdriver 7 16 and half inch wrench and a drill with 3 16 inch bit to assemble the system. Next group the like components together separating the single carriers into two equal piles. For ceiling mounted systems the cord clips of the live end master carrier must be reversed as shown in the following clip. Reverse the clips of the live and master carrier only. Don't reverse the clips of the. Select the 1458 reverse spindle and remove the nut and lock washer. Install the reverse 1458 spindle into the factory pre punched or field drilled 3 8 inch holes on the live end side of the track system. Secure the spindles to the track with a one half inch socket or wrench. Install the remaining reversed 1458 spindles. Be sure to use all the supplied spindles. Next select the standard 1458 spindle and remove its nut and lock washer. Install the 1458 in the factory punched or field drilled 3 8 inch holes on the dead end side of the track. Secure the bolt with a 1 half inch socket or wrench. Install the remaining 1458 standard spindles to the dead end side of the track system. Be sure and use all the 1458 supplied. Next select the live end master carrier. Note the orientation of the cable clamps. Install the live end master carrier to the 1400 track. Make sure the overlap arm is facing towards the center of the track system. Select the dead end master carrier. Note the cable clamp orientation of this master carrier. Install the dead end master to the 1400 track. Make sure the overlap arm is facing towards the center of the track. Next up, installing the single carriers. Hopefully you have the single carriers separated into two equal piles. Install one half the carriers on the live end and one half on the dead end of the track system behind the master carriers.
Now install the dead end pulley to the track by sliding it over the track at its end. Secure the pulley to the track with a 7 16th socket or wrench as shown. Now install the live end pulley by sliding it onto the track as shown. Make sure the wheels are facing towards the inside of the curve. Secure the pulley to the track with a 7 16 socket or wrench. Drill a 3 16 inch hole in front of the live end pulley for the 1309 end stop. Unassemble the 1309 end stop and install it in the previously drilled hole. Secure it with a flathead screwdriver. Drill a 3 16 hole in front of the dead end pulley for the second 1309 end stop. Unassemble the 1309 end stop and install it in the previously drilled hole. Secure it with a flathead screwdriver. Place the coil of operating cord on the floor below the live end pulley. Tape one end of the cord and thread it between the bottom cord guard and wheel as shown. Continue threading the cord through the reversed 1458 spindles as shown to the master carrier on the dead end half of the track. Loosen the bolt of the cord clamp and thread the cord through the clamp. Secure the cord to the master carrier by retightening the bolt. Install the floor pulley and preload it by pulling up on its wheel and inserting the locking clamp. Tape the remaining end of the cord coil and thread the cord around the floor pulley wheel and up to the live end pulley. Thread the cord between the top retainer and wheel of the live end pulley. Loosen both clamp bolts of the live end master carrier. Continue threading the cord around the rollers of the reversed 1458 spindles and through both cord clamps of the live end master carrier. Continue the cord to the 1458 spindles and thread it between the retainer and top wheel of the spindles. When you reach the dead end pulley, thread the cord around the pulley wheel and under the pulley's retainers. Continue the cord around the 1458 spindle rollers to the dead end master carrier. Loosen the bolt of the remaining cord clamp of the dead end master carrier.
thread the cord through the clamp, remove all the slack from the system, and secure the cord to the master by retightening the bolt. With all the excess slack removed from the system and the system properly rigged, cut any excess cord at the master carrier. Locate the center of the system. Align the two master carriers on the center mark as shown. The masters will not overlap when operated. However, this is the best way to make sure that the masters are centered. You can now tighten the cord clamps of the live end master to secure the master to the operating cord. Disengage the floor pulley lock plate to release its wheel and apply additional tension to the system. Operate the system several times to make sure it is operating correctly. 